You're listening to Overwatch Contenders Daily, your path to daily news, scores, and insights into the Overwatch League stars of tomorrow. Here's your host, Lemon Kiwi. Hey Overwatch fans, welcome to a very special edition of Overwatch Contenders Daily. I'm your host, Simon Kiwi. Today, we'll be exploring the stories behind the two grand finalists of Contenders North America. It was XL2 Academy versus Fusion University. They battled it out at the LA group stage this past weekend at the World Cup. If you got to check out my video about XL2, I love you. And if you haven't, well, it's in the description and you should go watch it right after this one. But today, all about Fusion University, past Contenders champions going at it for their second time, their second ring, their second crown whatever you want to call it we got their thoughts we got the inside scoop before their match after the match and we got the biggest plays that you missed from the grand finals check it out Fusion University were the Season 1 champions and continued to dominate the competition in Season 2. Fusion went through some serious roster changes, including the addition of Bernard to the team and Arrow leaving for the Dallas Fuel. But nothing fazed them. Fusion went undefeated for a second season in a row, only dropping two maps this time. So they ended the regular season first seed in their group. In playoffs, Fusion had an unexpected close game 5 win over Toronto Esports in the quarterfinal. But they shook off that rust and took a 3-0 sweep over Team Envy in the semifinals. But there was no doubt who the two grand finalists were going to be. XL2 Academy, the only other undefeated team, cleared their side of the bracket and the finals are set. Fusion University will face XL2 Academy to fight to keep their championship title. Before the contenders final began, I sat down with Fusion University's head coach Pagian, also translated by manager Alice, to discuss his thoughts on the upcoming match. And I'm joined here with Fusion University's head coach Pagian and fellow translator Alice to help us through this interview. But first, how are you feeling about today's match? 오늘 경기에 대해서 어떻게 기분 기분이 어떠신지 짧게 얘기해 주세요. 음, 되게 느낌이 되게 좋아요. He has a really, really good feeling about today. So excited to see the grand finals, but it's been a while since the last NA match. So how have you guys been preparing for all this time? 어떤 식으로 이 경기를 위해서 저희 팀이 준비를 하고 하고 있었는지 그거 짧게 얘기해 주세요. 음, 대부분 팀들이 우리가 조합을 하나만 쓸수 있을 거라고 아는데. 어 다른 조합들도 연습해 왔고 잘하고 있으 잘할 거니까 기대해 달라고 저는. Uh, he's excited for the audience and other teams to see that we are not just a one-trick team and we are capable of running a lot of different comp compositions and he wants everyone to cheer for us because we're gonna kick it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he said something with yeah. us profanity. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's an possibly another championship under their belt. So what has been the team's uh, strengths and what has been the XL2's weaknesses coming into the finals that you can identify? 우리 팀의 장점은 뭐고 그 다음에 코치님의 시선에서 XL2의 단점이 뭔지 얘기해 주시면 좋겠어요. 음, 일단 XL2는 많은 생각들을 해서 준비를 했을 것 같아요. 사실 어, 경기에 들어가게 되면은 어, 좀 많은 생각을 하는 팀이 좀 말리게 돼 있거든요. 어, 우리는 연습한 대로 어, 초점을 맞추고 중요한 것들만 체크해서 어, 게임에 임할 겁니다. So our strength is definitely we have the focus on just winning with certain compositions that we have been working for a very long time and in his opinion the uh, downside of XL2 is that um, XL2 has a lot of thoughts just happening right now just like changes happening to their compositions so I think that's the reason why Fusion will come out. And our 어, 피드백을 수용하는 게 굉장히 빨라요. 그래서 성장 속도가 굉장히 빨라서 어, 다른 팀들보다 되게 빨리 성장을 했고 
그래서 여기까지 왔다고 생각합니다. And another uh, strength of our team, Fusion University, is that our players are very, very good with taking feedbacks and just working with the feedbacks that are given. So that is one of our biggest strengths. Uh, well, you guys have been the best teams for so long, always on top, no matter what meta has come. You guys have adapted time and time again. But Zachary, so fellow player on Fusion University, has had a full day of matches today. So are you worried that he might be exhausted, or do you think day one will be serving more as a warm-up for him for the finals? He thinks that he sees uh, the matches and just having access to scrimming with Team USA and Fusion University. Zachary has developed as a player immensely and that has like kind of become a warm up for our match and he's he thinks that Zachary will do very great. And the amount of stamina you must have to play a full day of matches mm -hmm. and uh, an Overwatch League capacity and then you come to the finals all warmed up. Hopefully not too tired. We'll give him extra caffeine, but the finals will be going on at the end of the day. How confident are you in the team and what kind of scoreline are you expecting at the end? 우리 결승 그 게임에 대해서 어떻게 생각을 하시는지 그리고 점수 어떻게 점수가 나올 것 같은지 일단 첫 맵이 가장 중요해서 첫 맵을 만약에 우리가 이기면 어 4대 1로 이길 수 있다고 생각하고 만약에 진다면 경기가 어렵게 끌고 갈, 가서 4대 3으로 그래도 이길 수 있다고 생각합니다. So he thinks that if we win our very first map um, which we lost a coin flip, so XL2 will be picking the map. So if we win the first map, then we will uh, wrap up the series with 4-1 score. And if we lose, unfortunately, if we lose the first map, then we will still win, but have a very long match and go through all the seven maps and go 4-3. <laughs> The Grand Finals kicked off on Elios with Lighthouse, and Fusion Uni had a strong showing with Who Are You on the Dim Fist and Zachary on the Sombra. Even with a double stun comp with McCree and Brigida from XL2, Fusion's early aggression allowed them to take the point first. And it was so nuts because Beast Halo had a primal and Alarm builds a nano in less than 45 seconds of the first fight. The point flips for XL2 at 43% after some big plays from Nene taking out Alarm and Beast Halo. In order to retake the point, Fusion swapped to a triple tank, triple support composition and forced their way in. Thanks to a self-destruct from Bernard and another Nano from Alarm, Fusion seemed to just easily take back the point with ultimate's despair. And with incredible patience and fortitude, Fusion hold the point and take Lighthouse 100 to 53 over XL2. The finalists are off to ruins, the possible final point for a very strong series start for Fusion Uni, and boy was it a strong start. Fusion Uni tried their hand at another Doomfist Sombra dive composition, the same composition that dominated so well at the start of the last map. XL2 come out the doors with a triple tank, triple support composition. Who Are You just goes Super Saiyan and takes out four members of XL2 in the first fight, and Fusion Uni get the first capture. And Fusion Uni continued to corner and collapse XL2, who had just no idea how to counter the Doomfist somber dive from Fusion. And Fusion never lose a fight, and they end Ruins flawlessly 100 to 0. King's Row is chosen as map 2, and Fusion are on defense to start. It's no surprise that Sombra Doomfist Dive returns for them again, and XL2 come out the doors on their attack with a triple support Sombra Death Ball. So Fusion do an amazing job at surrounding XL2 all the time, separating them, rotating towards the high ground. Who Are You is just a force to be wrecking with on this Doomfist, constantly shutting XL2 down on every attempt. And in the last minute of play, Who Are You and the tanks go down, and XL2 have the upper hand to take the point. King's Row had to be one of Beast Halo's best maps we've seen all season from him. He's hopping in, he's hopping out of XL2's backline and living through everything. 
Even when getting pushed back, Fusion Uni stay patient, and they ended up punishing XL2 on their extension. Oh man, not gonna get anything. Jump the gun a little bit. Stun, knocked on down. Who are you? Still in the fray of the fight, Clo Man. Going the ball as Fusion now, investing the transcendence, going in deeper, and not letting XL2 get that crucial momentum. Paying a shatter, but actually getting a transcendence and a, a meteor spike out of that. That's, that's a decent trade for XL2 Academy. They're not gonna be too upset about that. All right, Fusion, we see the hack coming from Zachary in the back line. Of course, right now, he's really just focused on getting another EMP up. That's why he's in here. And oh, he's just gonna drop it immediately. Fusion, they wanna go! Who are you? Gets Megachu! And immediately, unbridled aggression striking from Fusion. Fusion Uni take back the fight in the last minute of play, stalling the payload short of point B. Who are you? Meteor strikes into XL2's backline with Beast Halo, and Fusion clean up the last fight before XL2 could even get anything going. So Fusion Uni hold XL2 meters away from point B. The same compositions from both teams come back again into the next round, and a huge biotic nade from Alarm hits everybody on XL2 and forces them off the point. This allows Fusion to get positional advantage and start moving forward, where Fusion Uni trap XL2 into the hotel. Beast Halo is then pinned out of the fight by Clone Man, but Fusion held their ground onto the point and prevented XL2 to find any good opportunity to pressure them back, so Fusion captured the point within the first fight of the game in front of XL2's eyes. Right, now who are you in? Picks up Bangachu, going for more. Oh, no! Point split, this is the worst case scenario for XL2 Academy. Letter number, you gotta stay on the point there, even if it was a losing fight. Fusion Uni try something very interesting here. They bring out Zachary on the May for some wall smash plays with Who Are You? And with some very good ult economy from XL2, Fusion are actually kept at the choke point for some time. But eventually, Zachary swaps back to the Brigida after his Blizzard ultimate is unfortunately eaten by Wu Yal. But Beast, Halo, and Bernard also swap to the Ryan Zarya, and then Bernard builds up to a grab and throws a huge five-man grab, and XL2 are cleaned off the streets of King's Row. And in the last fight, Fusion just played perfectly grouped up, patient, and punish everything XL2 were doing, and eventually push the cart to point B, and Fusion Uni go up 2-0 in the series. Fusion University's best performance of the series came on the third map of Temple of Anubis. Fusion Uni's comp on defense is slightly adjusted. It's the same somber dive, but Who Are You this time brings out the Genji. This was one of his most notable heroes of the season. XL2 on attack bring out a triple support somber death ball again. Fusion Uni continue to control the high ground and pressure XL2's attack from all angles, making it impossible for XL2 to get anything going. Fusion's ultimates just continue to have more value for their use than XL2's. Everybody's grouping up, and who are you has a nano blade. This could be big. Yeah, it's not 4 a.m. and you still have to be scared. That's the real tragedy about this, is here comes who are you. Blade coming out, but he's zoned out of the fight. Now down to about two seconds, but two seconds might be all he needs. Takes down Adam, slices on through. Tons of damage happening to XL2, and Fusion still makes it work. XL2 start to get the ball rolling when taking care of Zachary after he EMPs, and Alarm being killed early on from an EMP from Nene. Fusion wait on the high ground and willingly give up two ticks to XL2. And once Alarm is back, the Transcendence sets up Fusion for one last push for point A. And Beast Halo is nanoed, Who Are You Blades, and Fusion Uni miraculously take back the point before XL2 cap it in the last 30 seconds. And XL2 can't return in time to fight. Some three, Beast Halo goes, you know what, who are you? You're not really needed here, it's fine. The next round caught everyone off guard. Zachary's on the Winston, Beast Halo's on the Hammond, who knows what's going on there. But XL2 set up a more common defense of an Arissa Diva Widow Junkrat comp. But the real sniper on this map was Alarm, who bops Adam on the Mercy in the first seconds of the fight. And this allows Fusion to just roll through even more kills and on to point A, where Fusion Uni quickly take Temple of Anubis and go up 3-0 in the series. Fusion Uni look to close out the series as cleanly as they can on the possible final map of Escort on Rialto. Fusion start on the defense, and they return their very dominant composition of the Doombred Dive. XL2 change things up on their attack, and they have Mangachu on the fair, one of his most notable heroes, and Nene back onto the Sombra. 
Fusion's backline was pressured quite a bit by Mangachu by these projectiles from XL2. And even Who Are You falls off the map somehow off the screen. But Fusion work another miracle and form together one last push meters before the cart gets to point A. Halo misses his initial jump, but the EMP still stops Adam from escaping here. Ooh, Beast Halo again making so much work of those nano boosts. The chains unleashed, moves on in, and Fusion University buys time. So in the last minute of play, Fusion knew exactly what ultimates they were up against, so Fusion keep their supports hidden. So when Nene comes in with EMP, Alarm comes in with a super clutch transcendence to keep Fusion's defense steady. And in overtime, Zachary sets up an EMP, and Who Are You comes in with the final blade, and XL2's supports are dealt with again. So with nothing left, Fusion Uni hold an outstanding defense meters short of A. Fusion are back on their last attack, and all they have to do is push the card 2.A of Rialto to take the series. And Fusion continue their somber Genji dive strategy, and XL2 bring back their triple support somber death ball. Interestingly, Fusion are held at the gates for some time due to XL2 trying a different approach of holding close to the card. So Who Are You swaps to the Doomfist and physically pushes XL2 away from the card. So with half of XL2 down now, Fusion chase after the remaining kills and push the cart to point A, quickly taking care of Rialto and ending the series 4 to nothing. One realizes here, finally Nene puts the hack on him, this could turn it around, but the healers are back from Fusion and they're absolutely crushing, the nano boost on Beast Halo, cleaving absolutely everybody on the cart, the final seconds of NA contenders, Fusion absolutely looking to close out here, so much presence on this cart. It's Ruyo trying to buy time, the XL2 season on the line, Fusion University, you are the champion! Fusion University win their second Contenders North America Championship as their players set their sights on bright Overwatch League careers in their future. But following the match, I sat down with Fusion University's DPS players Who Are You and Zachary for some interviews about their match. And I'm joined here with star DPS player from Fusion University. Who are you, the young prodigy in Contenders North America? And joined with us is the translator Alice, also from Fusion University. So I got to start with another championship win for you guys. How are you feeling? I championship. 지금 기쁘고요. 그리고 지금까지 좀 팀의 팀적으로 좀 힘든 게 있었지만 그래도 다 같이 결승전에서 이렇게 이겨내고 4대 0으로 가볍게 이긴 게 되게 뜻깊다고 생각해요. So he's very happy to uh, have won this championship again for the second time, undefeated. And even though there were ups and downs with the team, he's happy that he got to secure this W with his team and that uh, he can't wait for his future career and the rest of the teams. We're excited to see maybe you getting signed, the team getting signed. I mean, who wouldn't sign you guys at this point? But I'm very curious to know more about your match. You played a lot of Doomfist. Zachary along your side played a lot of Sombra. So you guys play a lot of uncommon strategies. So why do you play a lot of Sombra and Doomfist, particularly in this finals? 이번 경기에서 너가 둠피스트를 많이 사용하고 그리고 제크홀이는 손보라를 많이 사용했는데 왜그 조합을 추구했는지 왜 팀이 그 조합에 대해서 편해 하는지 그거에 대해서 짧게 설명해 주면 좋겠어. 저희가 스크림을 하는 도중에 원래는 솜보라 둠피스트가 아닌 솜보라 트레이스를 쓸 생각이었지만 스크림 도중에 그게 그 조합이 잘 되지 않아서 다른 조합을 찾던 도중에 저희가 솜 둠피스 솜보라 둠피스트를 라는 조합을 이제 찾아내서 그 조합을 결승전 이틀에서 3일 정도 전부터 연습을 했었거든요. 근데 그게 짧은 기간인데도 불구하고 잘 저희한테 그 조합이 잘 맞아서 결승전에서 쓰고 그리고 그걸로 우승한 것 같아요. So uh, originally Fusion University, we practiced a lot of Sombra Tracer, but that comp wasn't working out as well as we had thought and uh, planned. So while we were just searching for a better comp to counter what we had thought XL2 was going to run, so we came up with Doomfist, Sombra, 
about two to three days before the final match. And turns out it was a great, great composition against XL2. And that's the reason why we were able to secure uh, this championship again. I just can't believe you're practicing this stuff days before the match and you pull it off and it was so one-sided. And this finals, to be honest, was a one-sided series. I think a lot of people thought this would be, you know, the match of the center. It'd be a lot closer. So from Fujian University, what do you guys attribute your success to? 4대 0으로 깔끔하게 우승을 했는데 그 이유가 뭔지 우리가 어떻게 열, 열심히 연습을 해서 이 정도로 좋은 성적을 거뒀는지 너의 생각을 얘기. スクリーンって前に次ぎとあごまに傷ぎとあごまに傷ぎぎぎとえそんでスクリーンスクリーンって私が大変あんでったんでくてくるってるてじょぽんぶんそうえんそぶてて前にはごくだめスクリーンでん
시간적으로 이제 다음 시즌 시즌 3때갈수 있기 때문에 되게 많은 시간이 걸리니까 되게 슬프고 저는 그리고 리그를 되게 가고 싶어요. Uh, he is bittersweet about the teammates having the opportunities to move up to league. Meanwhile, he is not of the eligible age. He will have to wait for season three of Overwatch League to be able to be signed onto a team. But he is happy that we, as a team, got a really, really good result this season as well. And they will have a lot of good opportunities and offers coming their way. But he's definitely bittersweet. And he has a definite plan to go to league and be a really good player in it. And I'm joined here with another star DPS player from Fusion University. Another prodigy to join me is Zachary. We've spoken before. How are you feeling after this championship? And what's with the bear? <laughs> I'm feeling great. It's a two-time contenders champion. And the bear is a gift from a fan that I got after the match. OK. They didn't, they didn't explain why it's a banana bear? All right, so I, I, have, <laughs> I have like a Discord kind of joke. And like community joke that I'm like the banana king, and okay. Fusion Uni as a team went to an arcade, and there was a crane machine, and I was trying to win a one of these like little bears with the face like this, uh -huh. and I just couldn't do it. Oh! Fusion Uni tweeted a picture of us at the um at the crane machine, and I said that I was sad because I couldn't get the bear. So you win contenders champs, but we struggle with bear arcade games. I I can't win <laughs> arcade games, but I can win Overwatch. Okay, well maybe well with the money from today's you can buy just a I ton just of bears. Bear. You just buy the whole machine and then you can practice at home. But uh, this was a fairly one-sided match. Uh, what did you attribute your success to? And is there anyone you'd like to shout out that helped you get to where you are today? Uh, so for the match itself and like strategies, we kind of like switched ourselves up on the fly because for scrim practice, we really only got to scrim against Team USA. So we had a really biased like look on the meta. So like in scrims, we were practicing comps like McCree, Bridget, and in the finals, we actually didn't play it at all. We only played like Sombra Doom or like, triple tank comps and stuff like that. So I'd say a lot of it was just like staying cool, understanding what we think the other team is going to play based off of the players that they have and what the meta is like for other teams that we've scrimmed other than USA. <laughs> and just like trying to adapt to it and stay calm. And for shouting out somebody specifically, I'd like to shout out who are you, obviously, Aww. my DPS partner. Because whenever I'm playing Sombra or any other character or any other hero, he's always like being by my side, making sure anything that I'm damaging is getting followed up, and that I'm getting protected, making sure that like I can just get the maximum amount of value, and he gets a ton of value just being by me and following up on what I'm doing. And we had like just switched up our strategies for the finals with the Doomfist because we were expecting a decent amount of tanks, because just it's just such a tank heavy meta. Like even in the Korea Contenders finals, it was very tank heavy, and USA was playing a lot of tanks. So we swapped off of our like Sombra Genji to Sombra Doom in like such a short notice, and he really like stepped up and did really good in the Doomfist. Uh, speaking of who are you, I just spoke to him, and he was he was saying this strategy of the Sombra Doom came what two days before the match. Is is he serious? Yeah. So I'd say around like two days before the match, it was like I think around the time that all the World Cup teams were getting here. So we were actually start or we able to like start scrimming land client with Team USA and. Our previous strategies against them kind of just felt like really bad when they were running the tank comps. And they Team USA actually ran like a lot of Sombra Doomfist and the comp just felt so overpowered that we wanted to try it out and we thought that we could like do be really good at it in a couple of days because swapping the Doomfist to Genji is just a tiny bit different. And instead of like relying on ult combos with the Doom with the, like the Genji, you can just go in with just your abilities and maybe use like only one ult to win fights with the Doomfist. Man, you're just a bucket of knowledge. I only knew about half of what you just said. <laughs> but speaking of just how much time you put into the game, how much you know, you're just you're just the ultimate flex player. We saw you play some Sombra, so, some May, some even Winston. today, some Winston. I might have missed that part, yeah. but and then Brigida, you play you play anything. Let's be honest. How, how do you divide your time at home to learn all these different heroes? Um, so like actually, just starting my career in Overwatch, I was pretty much just a one-trick Genji player. I know. Don't, so, you can't admit that. Well, I, I'm going to admit that. But <laughs> So I was like, I was a one-trick Genji, and then 
pretty much what I thought was that any team that I was going to join, if they needed like any specific hero, that I could just swap to that and just focus my time into like specific heroes that they need for me. Like for Fusion Uni, when I first joined, I was actually a projectile player. So I played like Genji and Farah, and I played a bit of off tank for my previous team. And then they're like, okay, we need Tracer player. So just play Tracer. And just I, play Tracer. I just okay. swapped my hero pool over to Hitscan. So like, yeah, I just make sure that whatever team I'm on has all the roles they needed filled. And it's just like super important to me. And you had a busy day. I think one of the busiest players today. You had World Cup matches and you had Contenders Finals. And I was talking to your coach a bit. Like, I would, w w like if he was worried or not that you'd be exhausted or maybe if this was going to warm you up. So in your opinion, did this exhaust you or did this motivate you? Because you guys had a stellar day today too. Uh, for Team USA specifically, Arrow, our head coach, like requested that I not like play in the match and just like take my time and focus on the contenders match because it's more important for me to win contenders than to play in one match against like in just in group stages for World Cup. So I'd say that like even if I was playing beforehand, I, I don't think I would get too exhausted because whenever I'm on stage, it just feels like really good playing and I'm always like in the zone. So I don't feel like I would burn out after just like two games or three games. Maybe like two super long series is maybe I'd burn out or like three super, super duper long series is I would be a bit tired, but I don't really think that I'd get too exhausted. I mean, I, I don't know where you were hiding. I thought maybe you'd be scrimming and practicing all day for Team USA if they're going to pull you out. It's some kind of spontaneous moment, but Contenders Finals was your priority and hey, it paid off. Championship again. But now with the expansion of Overwatch League teams, hey, everyone's go into some teams that they're looking for a lot of talent. And, you know, you're, we've talked before and how confident you are you're getting on a team. Who are you has to wait a year. Yeah. And everyone, I think anyone on Fusion University is signable. So um, with this performance today, do you think this solidifies your team's chances to get into an Overwatch League team? I'd say, like, for the individual players, yes. But as a team, I don't think it's, like, logistically possible for all of Fusion University to get in together. Because, like, there's age differences and maybe some players want to go to, like, specific teams and then other players just don't want to go there. So oh I think God. I think for individual players, yes, I feel like all the players on Fusion University that are eligible to play in Overwatch League will be in the Overwatch League next year because they're just, like, super standout. And in contenders, as you can tell in the finals, it was not really a challenge. Damn, not a challenge. I, I Quoted, quoted. Not a challenge. No, it's it's totally true. Well, I hope that who are you and, and yourself can land on a team once he is eligible. That would be oh, like boy. the ultimate duo of the century in the Overwatch League, the new Prophet and Bird Ring or whatever duo you want to put your, put yourself in. It's the Zachary and the who are you duo coming to Overwatch League one day. But thank you so much, Zachary, for joining me for another interview. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations you. on the big win. This was Overwatch Contenders Daily. I'm Lemon Kiwi. We're going to see you guys next week. Oh, 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 oh,